Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today I'm going to show you how to easily complete one of Tarkov's most notoriously annoying quests, Grenadier. The reason why this one is so important is that in the latest patch, quest progression was reorganised so that 762BP is no longer locked behind Punisher 5 and is now behind this quest instead. Grenadier is a task given by Prapor which appears at level 30 and requires you to kill 12 PMCs with grenades, but one of the major issues with this are the grenade changes that came in with the original version of 1212, which prevents you from speed throwing nades into your opponent's face. While this was a good change overall, it makes it a lot harder to get this one done. Oh, and in case you were wondering, there's no secret trick with the grenade launcher either, as only the throwable grenades count to complete this quest. So while you could go about your usual business in Tarkov using nades and completing it naturally, most grenades are for making people move and for area denial rather than killing them outright, and using them at close range or inside often gets you killed, especially as a solo player. The pin pull sound and animation is now too long and obvious, which gives your opponent an easy opening to push you with your weapon down. On this basis, the clear choice is to use the impact grenades. These were a controversial addition when they came out, as they don't have a regular fuse and instead go off when they hit something, leaving your opponent with virtually zero time to react. The second best are the VOG 25s, as they have the shortest fuse of the regular grenades at 2 seconds and the major upside of being purchasable on the flea, but impacts are still much easier in my opinion. There are two types of impact grenades, the RGO and the RGN. Both are available only from barters at Prapple 4, so you might want to wait until level 36 to complete this quest, as the only other alternative is to collect them from various grenade boxes around the maps or from running your scav, which has a chance to spawn in with them. These barters are not cheap, costing 3 paid for an RGO and 2 nails plus 2 D batteries for the RGNs, which is around 75k for each of them, but to get the quest done, I think it's well worth it. The RGO has a bigger blast radius than the RGN, but both will work for how we're going to use them. The trick for completing Grenadier quickly, as you might have guessed, is to do it on factory. PMC positions are relatively predictable, and the high concentration of walls gives plenty of room to blow people up. With our broad strategy down, onto the practicalities. An important tip that many people don't realise is that you can take out the grenade, pull out the pin, and hold the grenade in your hand with the pin out, which makes it much akin to the grenade launcher, as you have a much faster hand to impact time than usual. While you're holding the grenade, you can move and sprint around pretty much as you normally would with very minimal stamina loss. So little in fact that you can pretty much consider it to be infinite, for our purposes anyway. If you're not having any luck finding anybody and need to travel into a more open area, you can also press one of the primary weapon hotkeys which will get your PMC to put the pin back into the grenade and return to using your main weapon. Do note, it's not possible to put these grenades in your secure container, so I completed this with one grenade at a time to save some money. There is another mechanic that we need to discuss before you set off into the distance with impact in hand, which is the explosion delay. Both the RGN and RGO have an explosion delay stat of 0.3 seconds, which means that if you hit an object within that time after throwing it, rather than going off, the grenade will instead revert back to having a 3.5 second fuse. This is especially important on factory because the ranges that we're talking about are really low and it's surprisingly easy to accidentally be within that threshold. You need to be outside of about this range here, demonstrated in the clip, in order to actually allow the grenade to go off. In this first one, we're far enough away, but in the second, the grenade just bounces off. Interestingly, as it bounces upwards, it goes off when it hits the ground a second time. However, the next one, the three and a half second fuse kicks in properly. Do remember too that you can get yourself killed or at least badly damaged if it's too close as well. These are grenades after all. Naturally, it's very useful to have a good appreciation of the factory spawns, and personally I find the easiest area to complete this task to be in the forklift section of the map. This is because the office tends to be a little congested, as the stairwells and the office itself are a bit too close for the delay timer sometimes, whereas forklift is slightly more open and also has the highest concentration of players at the start of a raid. Starting in either of the main forklift spawns is fine, and the first thing to do is to find the next closest PMC spawn. If you're the one down the corridor, you know almost certainly there will be a player in the back room, and if you're in the back room, you should get out ASAP and defend the glass corridor and the left corridor from further out as it's easy to get stuck in there. At glass corridor itself, sometimes there is a player that spawns directly in front of you towards gate 3, and unless there is specifically fighting going on at forklift already, I never run down glass corridor itself as it's too exposed with nowhere to go. When I spawn behind the box, I usually sprint across and check for the next all spawn first, then pop a propital afterwards as you want to be in the corridor for the minimum amount of time possible. Then you can either run across the map and down into the tunnels, or directly back towards forklift via the outside doors. 
On that note, I do recommend taking a propotol with you and using it on entry. The just over 4 minutes of painkiller effect is more than enough for this impact strategy and stops you from having movement issues from broken legs whilst being extremely fast to apply when you enter the raid. You could use morphine instead, but I find them to be very close in price currently, so I'd rather take the extra plus 1 regen alongside the painkiller effect. As for the other spawns, I tend to run down into the tunnels and go to forklifts as well. Sometimes you'll meet someone in the tunnels, which are also fine for using impact, so this can work out, but if the fight has already happened, you can decide whether to continue hunting or just to reset and try again. One of the big benefits of Factory is the speed at which you can cycle through raids. Just make sure you bring your Factory exit key so you can use any of the four extracts as you see fit, which makes it under 30 seconds to get from an exfil to anywhere on the map. You could go in naked I guess, but you run the risk of having AI scavs all over you at the start of the raid due to tagged and cursed, which is really less than ideal for this quest in particular. I generally tend to run a cheap class 4 with stomach protection like the rat rig, and the 153 shotgun with fichette as my main weapon once the impact is thrown. It's very cost effective, and at factory ranges stands up extremely well against even some relatively high end kits. Next we'll look at some typical gameplay to show you the ups and downs so you can see how it generally works out and can learn from some of my mistakes at the same time. Oh god, that's a scout. <laughs> GG's boys, GG's, that was very unfortunate for them. Okay, so in this one, I'm actually going to go down here straight off the bat before pulling my impact out. Sounds like a slightly more beefy gun than I like, but... I think there's someone over here. Right, so. This one again, okay. In fact, let me turn this laser on first. Anyone? There we go. We got one. Ah, ah, where's my nade? No. I'm just going to kill this guy. Ah! Maybe? No. <laughs> Yeesh. Oh, he's right there. Oh, he's the, he's the dead guy. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, God. 
Oh, there we go. Every time. Whoa! Okay, I didn't expect that guy to be there. Holy hell. Oh god. We killed that guy. It's Timmy. Ow. That's bad. Yeah, I had too low HP there. Too low HP. <laughs> that was not a bad bad run, though. They just don't die because of the RNG of the pellet spread and stuff like that. Looks like a PMC. Can't be a player scav, surely. Um, hello? We got a kill. Next up, once you've completed this quest and have access to 762 BP, go and check out my RD704 guide, the newest 762 weapon in Tarkov that rivals the old favourite, the Mutant, on performance. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.